Okay, so hello everyone, since you requested for this, now here it is. Finally, in this video, we will be talking about how to solve rational inequalities. But take note before we talked about rational equation. So in rational equation, we have used the equal sign. But in rational inequalities, we will be using the signs of inequalities such as greater than, less than, greater than or equal, and less than or equal to. Now, how do we solve our rational inequalities problems? So, I have here, I have constructed here seven easy steps for you to follow and for you to be able to find the solution set. First is to move all the terms to the left side and zero on the right. So all the terms excluding zero should be on the left side and zero should be <coughs> left on the right side. Next, we have number two is to find the LCD or the least common denominator. Third is to find the values of x. So that's up to you on how you will manipulate the inequality to find the value of x. Fourth, you substitute the values of your x to the inequality to check if they are part of the solution. Fifth, make a graph and define the intervals. Sixth, you construct a sign table. And seventh, you summarize your solution set using the set notation or the interval notation. So to further illustrate this one, let's begin by having a few examples. Now suppose, let's say we have number one, solve for the inequality, let's say 2x over x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 1. So take note, ang first step, tanan dapat all of the terms should be on the left and only zero will be left on the right side. So we'll be using the properties of inequalities. We will subtract one from both sides. This becomes 2x over x plus 1 minus 1 is greater than or equal to 1 minus 1. Now on the left side, simply copy 2x over x plus 1 minus 1 greater than or equal to 0. Now we're done with our first step. Next is to get the LCD. Take note that 1 here is a whole number. And whenever it is a whole number, automatically the denominator is positive 1. So let's go and take the factors of 1 and the factors of x plus 1. So we have 1 and x plus 1. <clears throat> Take note that the factor of 1 is only 1 and itself, or 1 itself. <clears throat> Next, the factor of x plus 1 is simply 1 times x plus 1. So we have 1 common terms in here. We will write that here. We have 1, so no pair. We'll just copy this along with x plus 1. Now, 1 times 1 times x plus 1 is simply x plus 1. Now, x plus 1 will be your least common denominator for the said <coughs> terms. Okay, so let's delete 1 in here. This is positive 1. Okay, again, the LCD, that's already x plus 1. Now, x plus 1 divided by x plus 1, that is 1, times the numerator 2x. Copy the operation subtraction. x plus 1 divided by positive 1, that is simply x plus 1 times the numerator 1, greater than or equal to 0. Now, let's distribute. 1 times 2x, we have 2x. Copy the operation subtraction. Okay, quantity 
x times 1, that is positive x, 1 times 1, that is positive 1, all over x plus 1 greater than or equal to 0. Next, we have an operation here, and we have the quantity. So we'll distribute the operation to the terms inside the quantity. This will give us 2x, let's just copy that, negative times x, that's negative x, negative times positive 1, that is negative 1. Okay, that's negative 1 all over x plus 1 greater than or equal to 0. Now, let's combine the like terms on the numerator. We have here 2x and negative x. 2x minus x is simply x. Let's copy negative 1 all over x plus 1 greater than or equal to 0. Now, right after this, we will separate the numerator and the denominator. So the numerator here, that is x minus 1. Let's equate that to 0. And we have the denominator here, that's x plus 1. We will also equate this to 0. Now, x minus 1 is equal to 0. We have to get the value of x that is by using addition property of equality. So we will be adding 1 to both sides and this will give us x is equal to 1. On the other hand, we have x plus 1 equals 0. So we'll be using subtraction property of equality. We will subtract 1 from both sides. This will give us x is equal to negative 1. Now we have two values for x here, positive 1 and negative 1. Now we have to check if these two values are part of the solution to our inequality. So let's see. For x is equal to 1, let's write the inequality 2x over x plus 1 greater than or equal to 1. So we will substitute positive 1 to x. This becomes 2 times 1 over 2. Okay, this is 1. Now we have 2 times 1, that is 2, all over 1 plus 1, that is 2. 2 divided by 2, that is 1, greater than or equal to 1. Now we have used the word or, so this means... It only takes at least one of them to be true for us to consider this as a true solution. 1 is not greater than 1, but we know for a fact that 1 is equal to 1. So we will say that this is part of the solution. Alright, so let's say part of the solution. This is part of the solution. Part of solution. Next, let's go and check if x is equal to negative 1. So let's write down the inequality. That's 2x over x plus 1 greater than or equal to 1. So we will substitute negative 1 to all of our x. We have 2 times negative 1 all over negative 1 plus 1 which is greater than or equal to 1. 2 times negative 1, that is negative 2. Negative 1 plus 1, that is 0, greater than or equal to 1. Take note, if you have division operation including 0, so let's say A, so let's set let A be any numbers. So that could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative, and so on. So if I have here 0 divided by A, the answer is 0. For example, 0 divided by 3, that's equal to 0. 0 divided by 1, that's equal to 0. This is for our first case, let's say. Next, if I have here 
a number is to be divided by 0. So let's say example 2 divided by 0, negative 7 divided by 0. The answer in here will be undefined or we cannot define the answer but it's undefined. Now if I have here 0 over 0 that will be indeterminate. Okay, so you have to remember all of those. Zero to be divided by any number, the result is zero. A number to be divided by zero, the result will be undefined. Zero to be divided by itself, that will be indeterminate. Okay, now going back to our, to our problem, negative two here divided by zero, that's already undefined, so this is not part of the solution, not part of the solution, not part na lang akong ibutang. Now, right after you check these values, we'll be making a graph. Okay? <clears throat> Let's make a graph in here. So we have two values for our x, negative 1 and positive 1. Let's have negative 1 and positive 1. Now on top of our numbers, we'll be making a circle or an open circle or an unshaded circle. Okay, these circles here will only be shaded if the numbers on it are part of the solution. Now, let's see negative 1. Negative 1 is not part of the solution, so let's keep this one unshaded. Let's check for positive 1. Positive 1 here is part of the solution, so we will be shading this. Now, let's name each of the intervals in here. So let x be any numbers, so x will be less than negative 1. From negative 1 to the left side, those are numbers that are less than negative 1, like negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and so on, until negative infinity. Next, we have negative 1 to positive 1. This means x is greater than negative 1 but less than 1. Okay, next on the line, we have all the numbers that are greater than 1. So that could be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, and so on, until positive infinity. So this is x greater than 1. Now, right after you make this, we'll have to see or we have to create if these intervals are part of the solution. That is by using the sign table. Okay, so on the table, we'll have to make this here. Okay, for a while. We have the interval. Okay, in this case, we have three intervals. The x is less than negative 1. The x is greater than negative 1, but less than 1. And the x, which is greater than 1. On the second row, we'll have the test points. So these test points are values of our axis, okay? The values of our x that fall on each particular intervals. So let's make it here. Any values of x. We'll be naming that one later. Next will be the next row that is your numerator of your inequality not the original inequality the inequality that you have come up with so in this case the numerator is x minus 1 and we have the denominator is x plus 1 
Now we have the entire fraction and the last row, x minus 1 all over x plus 1. Now let's go and have our test points first. So in this case, x is less than 1. So any number, we can choose any number that is less than 1. We can have here negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and so on. But to make our solution short, let's have negative 2. Here we have any number that is greater than negative 1 but less than 1. So we can have it here, 0. Next, any number greater than 1, we can have here 2. Again, for the test points, you can choose any number as long as it falls on its respective intervals. Now, let's see for the test points. If x is negative 2, your x minus 1 would be, let's say x minus 1, and x is negative 2, so we'll have negative 3. The answer is negative 3. But take note, this is a sign table, so we will only include the signs. The sign of 3 here is negative, so we'll write negative. No? Just exclude the number. Now, let's continue. If x is negative 2, your x plus 1 would be negative as well. So do not touch first the last column. We'll proceed to the third column. If x is 0, we have here 0 minus 1. The answer is negative 1, so it's still negative. If x is equal to 0, your x plus 1 would be 0 plus 1. That's positive 1. The sign is positive. If x is 2, your x minus 1 would be 2 minus 1. That is positive 1 or positive. If x is 2, your x plus 1 is positive 3 or simply positive. Now, we will be multiplying the signs in every column to get or to fill in the, to fill out the spaces in here. Negative times negative, that is positive. Negative times positive, that is negative. Positive times positive, that is positive. Now, how do we know if these intervals are part of the solution? We will go back to the original inequality. If this is greater than or equal or greater than, you will only consider the last row with a positive sign. But if this is less than or less than or equal to, we will only consider the rows with a negative sign. In this case, the symbol is greater than or equal, so we will only choose those with positive sign on the last row. So we have positive sign, the interval is x less than negative 1. So we'll be writing x is less than negative 1. Next, we have another positive here, that is x is greater than 1 x is greater than 1. Now take note, 1 here is shaded, so we can have it less than or equal in here and greater than or equal in here. So let's put it here. Okay, since it is shaded. Now we'll be writing the set notation or the set of solutions. So for the set of set notation, you'll start by having this symbol x is an element of real numbers where or such that our part of the solution, the interval that is part of our solution, that is x less than negative 1, and the other solution, x is greater than or equal to 1. x is greater than or equal to 1. Take note that we cannot directly use or because the interval next to x is less than negative 1 is not part of the solution. So we'll only use the word or. Now, for the, in, for the set notation, we have this interval from negative infinity, right, negative infinity to negative 1. Obviously, negative infinity is not shaded so it's not part of the solution because we do not know when will the number end. We have a lot of numbers man so this will be open from negative infinity 
and close to negative 1 as well because 1, negative 1 in here is not shaded. Next, the other part of our solution is 1 to positive infinity. So we have 1 to positive infinity. Again, positive infinity in here will be open and positive 1 in here is closed. Why? Because it's shaded. It means it's part of the solution. And we have used the word or in here in sets. The equivalent symbol is union. So this will be your interval notation and this will be your set notation and this will be your graph representation of the set of solutions. This means that the numbers that fall on these intervals are solution to your inequality. Or if we will substitute those values in this equation, in its inequality rather, this will become true. That the left side could be greater than or equal to the right side. I hope that's clear. Now, if you have questions, su suggestions, comments, feel free to write it down on the comment section. Thank you.